On October 1st, 1949, Mao Zedong declared the creation of the People's Republic of China, signifying a great shift in the political philosophy of the country. However, to execute and maintain such a colossal change, a monumental amount of propaganda was needed to influence the views of the people in favor of the Communist Party and Mao. Before the Communists took power in China, the Nationalist Party of China, known in China as the Kuomintang, was in power. Between the years of 1937 and 1947, the Kuomintang placed no restrictions on the spread of communist propaganda in China. This was due to their collaboration with the Communist Party in fighting against Japan in the Second Sino-Japanese War, with the guerrilla warfare tactics of the communists proving effective in defending against the influence of Japan on the Chinese mainland. After the war, the Kuomintang outlawed the Communist Party. However, many communists took refuge in places with foreign influence, such as British Hong Kong and certain parts of Shanghai and Tianjin. There they continued to think radically and took advantage of the free press of Hong Kong to share ideas. Perhaps the most powerful element of Chinese communist propaganda during the Mao era was its portrayal of Mao as a deity. Posters commonly showed Mao in front of the sun, displaying how Mao would illuminate the way for progress in China and calling for Chinese citizens to follow his thought. This poster from 1968 tells Chinese citizens to wish Mao eternal life. It was a cultural expectation under Mao that every Chinese household would have this official portrait of Mao to worship. According to Stephen Landsberger, days for a Chinese person living under Mao would consist of asking for instructions in the morning, thanking Mao for his kindness at noon, and reporting back at night which involves bowing three times, singing the national anthem, reading passages from The Little Red Book, a compilation of hundreds of aphorisms from Chairman Mao in front of his picture, and announcing their revolutionary progress. They would not only recite The Little Red Book in their homes, they would also do it in other situations when they were looking for guidance like in this 1971 image showing members of the Beijing Revolutionary Opera reciting the book before a performance. Mao also rejected traditional Chinese religions and philosophies, such as Buddhism and Confucianism. In this image, Buddhist statues are leaning against the wall of a Beijing temple after being ripped from their pedestals by young red guards inspired by Mao. At the world-famous Lin Yin Buddhist Temple in Hangzhou, this Buddha statue was defaced with signs calling to destroy the old world and establish a new world. 
The anti-Buddhist and anti-Confucius rhetoric was present in the People's Republic since its founding, but escalated into violence in 1966 with the coming of the Cultural Revolution, a Maoist socio-political movement to cleanse the country of all traditional and capitalist remnants. All of these communist principles were constantly shoved down the people's throats by propaganda, both shaming the traditional thinkers and praising the communists. This famous billboard from 1972 reads, Long live the great, glorious, and correct Communist Party of China, and was on display for all Beijing residents to see. In the Tian 導致中華民族劫難的浩劫,應該記住這個慘痛的歷史教訓,絕不能讓它重演。According to detailed calculations by Professor Andrew Walder, the upheaval and suppression campaigns to restore order resulted in the deaths of approximately 1.6 million people over the course of 34,000 episodes of revolutionary violence in the Cultural Revolution. Here, a man talks about his time as a Red Guard, a teenage communist revolutionary. Of course, I joined. It's uh, glorious to join here. Yeah. I was uh, totally uh, pour my energy, even my life, into it to support whatever Mao asked me to do. We thought he was a guard. Propaganda also focused on motivating the people to work and industrialize China. This poster reads, Turn China into a prosperous, rich, and powerful industrialized socialist country under the leadership of the Communist Party and Chairman Mao. During the Korean War, this poster was common, encouraging people to enlist in the military to try to defeat capitalism. The bottom reads, the great achievements of the People's Republic of China in the last three years, encouraging people to make their own volunteer contribution. Notice the grave of the American soldier shown in this poster. America, along with Japan, was frequently portrayed in a negative light in Mao era propaganda. Additionally, posters showed happy people, sending the message that if these people are happy living under the communist regime, you should be too. This tactic is a very powerful one that was widely used during the Mao era to maintain order. The main impact of this propaganda, combined with the harsh punishment for possessing anti-communist ideas, was that the Mao regime could stay in power. Freedom of speech was so heavily repressed that many people were unaware of events where enemies of the state were slaughtered by the thousands. After Chairman Mao died, Deng Xiaoping took control of China and did not produce as much propaganda as Mao did. As a result, Western ideas became more known and popular, spread through people like Professor Fang Lizi, and caused events like the 1986 student demonstrations. Outrage due to lack of freedom of speech coupled with inflation rates of over 18% in 1988 were the primary cause of the famous 1989 Tiananmen Square protests. This happened under a less radical ruler than Mao, proving the effectiveness of Mao propaganda in maintaining the brutal regime. <laughs>